At exactly 2.43 p.m. today, India took a giant leap to the moon. And what a spectacular leap it was for the second time, Five, creating four, history three, once again. This was two, the GSLV one, Mark III rocket zero. that blasted off into space, carrying the Chandrayaan-2 on board, the Vikram and the Pragyan lunar rover and lander. At a speed of 11 kilometers per second, the rocket blasted off from the Satish Dhawan Space Research Center in Sri Harikota. The mission is expected to take 48 days before the Vikram and Pragyan land on the south pole of the moon. Chandrayaan-2 is slated to land on the surface of the moon on September 7th, 2019. Prime Minister Narendra Modi hailed the launch of Chandrayaan-2 and even kept a close watch live at the entire process. This is India's second mission to the moon after the successful Chandrayaan-1 in 2008. The launch has put India in a club of elite nations like the US, Russia and China that have successfully conducted controlled landings of spacecraft on the moon. It is the beginning of a historical journey of India towards moon and to land at a place near South Pole to carry out scientific experiments to explore unexplored. In fact, after that a serious technical snag we had and we fixed that technical snag, now ISRO bounced back with flying colors. Immediately after the technical snag observed in an intelligent way, one week back, the, the entire team ISRO swing into action. In fact, next 24 hours, the work done in this center was mind-boggling. And quickly, the vehicle was brought back to normal and identified the root cause of the technical snag, corrected it, everything happened in 24 hours. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who was keeping a close watch on the launch, congratulated the entire team of ISRO in this audio message. Listen. Hey. Chandrayaan 2 mission ke safal launch par aapko aur ISRO ki puri team ko bahut bahut badhai Aaj ka ye safal launch pure desh aur sabhi bhartiyon ke liye bahut garva ka vishay hai pichle sapta takniki karanon se launch thagit karna pada tha uske baad आपने और इसरो की टीम ने बहुत तत्परता से तकनीकी खराबी का पता लगाया और उसे हल करने के लिए जरूरी कदम भी उठाए और अब एक हफ्ते के भीतर ही लॉन्च में सफलता हासिल की है इसके लिए आप सभी विशेष बधाई के पात्र हैं यह एक शानदार उदाहरण है कि हमारे वैज्ञानिक वैज्ञानिकों में सभी चुनौतियों का मुकाबला करने के लिए प्रतिभा है क्षमता है और आत्मविश्वास भी है जितनी बड़ी चुनौती हो आपका इरादा उतना ही पक्का हो जाता है मुझे बताया गया है कि लॉन्च में एक हफ्ते की देरी होने के बावजूद चंद्रमा पर चंद्रयान टू के पहुंचने की तारीख वही रहेगी जो पहले थी आप सभी वैज्ञानिकों ने सिर्फ पिछले लॉन्च की तकनीकी चुनौती का सामना किया बल्कि अब पहले से भी कम समय में चांद पर पहुंचने का इरादा किया है चंद्रयान टू अपने मिशन में पूरी तरह कामयाब होगा यह चंद्रमा पर उतरने वाला भारत का पहला स्पेस क्राफ्ट बनेगा और भारत को चंद्रमा पर पहुंचने वाला दुनिया का चौथा देश बनेगा यह विश्वास सभी भारतीयों के मन में है चंद्रमा पर चंद्रयान टू 
इसकी सफलता और सफल लैंडिंग भारत को अंतरिक्ष की खोज में और भी आगे ले जाएगी और हम चंद्रमा के बारे में पूरी मानव जाति के ज्ञान में पहले से भी ज्यादा बढ़ोतरी करेंगे मैं इस मिशन की पूर्ण सफलता के लिए आप सबको बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूं एक बार फिर से पूरे देश की ओर से इसरो के सभी वैज्ञानिकों और कर्मियों को चंद्रयान टू के सफल लॉन्च की हार्दिक बधाई देता हूं And I want to take you now straight to Sri Hari Kota because that's where the spectacular launch of Chandrayaan 2 took place. With me is our group editorial director Raj Chengappa, who was there during the abort last week and flew back there for today's spectacular mission. Also with us is our editor Kamaljit Sandhu, who's been reporting right through this week on that spectacular mission. Raj, to you first. You are in the viewing gallery. Describe those magical moments, those electric moments before and after liftoff, because you. You saw it. It's one thing to see it on TV or on a screen. It's another to see it right there. You know, watching a rocket is the greatest sound and light show that anybody can have, because as the rocket takes off, you see this giant flame that goes up, almost a tail that is long as one kilometer. It's a brilliant orange. I mean, no. comparative thing is there not even gas fire or any other fire can compare to the brilliance of this luminescent orange that goes up and and, and it you know it's barely 30 seconds by the time the sound hits you mm. the rocket is disappearing into the clouds but when the sound comes there's such a deep rumble you know you feel it in your stomach itself the entire building vibrates uh, you know you could it, it might take 5 hours Actually, to reach the uh, to reach Chennai from Delhi might even take 24 hours, but it is worth that 30 seconds just to watch it. I was in the visitors' gallery. You could see the excitement, the tension that was there as they they actually counted down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. and then when the rocket took off there was a huge cheer as it lifted out everybody was looking at it in awe including me by the way you mm. become a little boy or a girl who are you <laughs> at that particular time and then came as it went up we were watching the monitor there was this shouts of bharat mata ki jai jai hind i mean it was amazing i've never watched a launch from the visitors gallery i have always been in the media gallery this really made it worth it It was. I mean, I can imagine it being worth it. Uh, you know, Kamal, I am so jealous of you and Raj uh, having gotten the chance to be there for this wonderful, wonderful mission. Uh, Kamaljit, what is you know what was the mood like? You were there among the scientists. There were many students who had gathered in that area as well. Kamal, what was it like being there? it was electrifying and just before the launch there was tension there was anxiety but when it took off uh, let me tell you even at the media stand there were at least 100 people on the terrace and everybody was clapping yeah. there was a round of applause there and obviously when uh, the isro uh, spokesperson said all is normal uh, that was the moment uh, that there was a sense of relief and remember the isro uh, scientists have been working day in and day out a uh, 24/7 they've been burning the midnight oil and the result is out there for everyone to see uh, but remember the real test will be in the next 48 days when uh, the launcher really goes down the vikram launcher with pragyan as uh, the uh, as the rover yes. so that is the crucial bit but at this point of time a billion hopes being carried by chandrayaan 2 uh, that's a long journey to make but that 30 seconds as raj was saying were the most crucial the most exhilarating and yes uh, many challenges uh, there was uh the, the glitch technical glitch which was detected but all is gone well now and all hopes and prayers that the next 48 days will go down well as well absolutely you know 48 days raj 48 days before uh you know chandrayaan finally lands on the moon the lunar module the lander and then the pragyan uh, lunar, lunar rover which will you know come out and then conduct all its research on the lunar surface take us through what happens next the chandrayaan 2 is now in earth's orbit what happens next raj in terms of the fact that uh, you know as the isro chairman put it this is the beginning of a long journey mm. what we what happened today is that the giant rocket the heaviest payload rocket that india has has taken off successfully the gslv mark 3 this is a, a a launcher that will not only put india's man mission 
uh, that is going to happen in, uh, in, in a couple of years, 2022, the Gaganyaan, yes. as well as the heavy lift satellites, the communication satellites over four tons. That's one big success. That is validated. Now comes even a tougher part. Mm. There was also, let's not forget, that the, uh, uh, the payload, the Chandrayaan-2, has to reach the moon first. Yes. And that is going to take close to 40 days. Then after that, there is this very agonizing wait. As the, as the chairman said, it's almost like, uh, you know, experiencing terror. <laughs> because yeah. there is this, once the orbiter detaches the lander, it has to come and land softly. So mm. it has to shut the engine. It's very intricate maneuvering. Once it lands, it not only must start transmitting, but also allow a rover. This rover... Uh, can move for half a kilometer around that area to do experiments that also has to succeed so apart from the big success today they're looking firstly for the uh, orbiter to reach the moon yes then the orbiter detaches and there's a lander and then there's a rover so there are three big technologies that have to be validated but a great start a great beginning for isro today an absolutely picture perfect start to an intricate mission kamaljeet uh, you know i'm very curious because you know the people of isro are so hard working I, I, I'm actually wondering whether they get the evening off today to celebrate or is there no such luxury for our hardworking men and women of ISRO because I would imagine that after such an achievement at least they should get a chance to party a little bit, have some fun, celebrate but obviously they can't because they have to keep all their eyes on Chandrayaan. Well, that is definitely a serious business and uh, Shiv, you and I can actually party, but can <laughs> ISRO really afford that? As a matter of fact, K7, the ISRO chief, uh, really mentioned that there are sleepless nights and that enough people would get sleep. Uh, but remember, this is a long mission, uh, but the sense of relief, especially after the last week anxiety, uh, when last hour uh, that mission was called off, it was delayed for a week, uh, but the technical glitch was caught on just in time. And now the correction yep. has been done and I think uh, it was a very good call to take because remember that could have been disastrous so it was a setback but not a failure there is no possibility of failure when it comes to a mission like this Apollo 11 uh, that's a 50-year landmark uh, where uh, Neil Armstrong and the others had actually set foot on yes. moon India is still waiting that chance of having a soft landing especially for a lunar vehicle uh, we will have Gaganyaan in December 2021 maybe pushed to December or uh, 22 but the fact is uh, that India is surging ahead in the space race and that is the fourth country to do so and yes uh, that gives a big push uh, not just to the commercial scenario not just putting satellites there but having the cheapest mission there it's one uh, third the cost of the statue of unity yes uh, all countries are looking out how india is performing it and when chandrayaan one took off uh, remember, it discovered water. That was not known earlier. Chandrayaan 2 has many more hopes, a billion hopes riding on it. So yes, all eyes on Chandrayaan 2 and its mission. Very, very crucial point that Kamaljeet makes uh, is not just about the scale of India's achievement, but at, at the economy, the low cost at which this achievement has actually been reached it is very very important because space is not a cheap business it's a costly business and yet isro has demonstrated that it can do it at low cost with safety with proficiency and with ab absolutely uh, you know no quality spared in the success of such a mission that's what they've demonstrated well the historic flight come on stay with me the historic flight of india's second moon mission is unique in many ways let's take you through what the mission is really out to achieve. The flight of Chandrayaan 2 is unique in many ways. There are many firsts. So let's begin with the first one. Bahubali. That's right. The largest, the heaviest rocket built by Indian Space Research Organization, the GSLE Mark III. This is the heaviest rocket. This will carry Chandrayaan 2. That's point one. Point two, this space mission will carry a soft landing on the moon. The first Chandrayaan mission, well, it orbited the moon. This time you're not only landing, it's a soft landing and on the unexplored regions of the moon, the lunar south pole. Then this is the first Indian mission to explore the lunar terrain using homegrown technology. That's right. It's made in India. This entire technology is made in India. Also, what makes this unique, this mission is led by two women directors and that is what makes this mission so absolutely wonderful. The two 
project directors are M. Vanita and Ritu Karidal. That's not all. India, of course, will be the fourth country in the world which will carry out this soft landing on the lunar surface. Russia has done it, the United States has done it, China has done it, India will do it. And back uh, for a final question to Raj Chengappa from Sri Harikota. Raj, you know, considering you've spent, you've seen, you've been looking at and, you know, witnessing rocket launches at ISRO since the 1980s, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I grew up reading your pieces on India's space program and the very many missions. On this latest one, what does Chandrayaan do for India's space mission and what lies ahead? If Chandrayaan 2 succeeds, ISRO, ISRO, I mean, even if it doesn't, you could have a failure. That's not the point. If it does succeed, this will be the forerunner of a huge range of planetary exploration by India. Mm. We have, as uh, mentioned earlier, the Gaganyaan coming up. That is going to happen in 22. That is going to be uh, ISRO putting up its, uh, the first Indian into space, followed then by possibly a probe to Venus. And very, very interestingly, India has announced a space laboratory like the space station over there. Yes. This is also joining the big boys. What uh, Chandrayaan 2 does is one big step towards that goal of uh, joining the big boys where India will be up there in terms of uh, uh, planetary exploration, in terms of solar exploration, India's out there. Well, the, I can tell you that the heart is really full. Watching it on television screens here in the newsroom, here in the studio, our hearts have been full, our eyes have welled up. I can only imagine what it's been like for the both of you, Raj and Kamalji. Thank you so much for bringing us those wonderful reports on such a historic day. Well, India could have sent two lunar missions for the budget of Avengers Endgame. Let that sink in, viewer. Two lunar missions for the budget of the film Avengers Endgame. As Chandrayaan 2 cost India 978 crores, while Avengers was made for 2,443 crore rupees. My colleague Gaurav Savant gets you the details. More facts about Chandrayaan 2. In India, everyone says how expensive is the mission and this is something that even the Prime Minister has talked about. How inexpensive is India's mission to the moon. So let's now give you some statistics. Chandrayaan 2 costs less than some Hollywood films. That's a fact. That's a fact that's been made. The moon mission costs less than half of what Avengers Endgame cost and much less than Interstellar. What does this mean in actual numbers? Let me now give you numbers. The total cost of the project is 1000 crore. Each aspect of this project is less than 1000 crore. What does this mean? Well, the spacecraft that's been developed at a cost of about 603 crore the launcher the gslv mark 3 bahubali that's been developed at the cost of 375 crore rupees so the rover the launcher and the spacecraft all in less than a thousand crore well even as the world is applauding india and team chandrayaan 2 and the beautiful launch that just took place a political credit war has erupted uh, by the Congress party in Delhi. Congratulating ISRO for the space leap, the Congress actually found it fit to tweet, and I quote, this is a good time to remember the visionary move of India's first PM, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, to fund space research uh, through the ISRO. And also Dr. Manmohan Singh for sanctioning the Chandrayaan 2 project in 2008, unquote. While the Congress might be stating facts, it might be accurate, it seems a little off message to try and claim credit for the Chandrayaan 2. The BJP has slammed the timing of the tweet. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.